Welcome, everyone. I'm calling this service today a service for the bereaved during a time of pandemic. It's normal for Christian congregations to experience the death of church members and for families to experience the death of loved ones. However, in the midst of a global pandemic, we also experience additional sorrow and maybe even despair when circumstances are out of our control, sheltering in place, the inability to travel to the deathbed of a loved one or to help the surviving family members wondering when a funeral or burial might take place are all very unsettling for us. This is why we turn to our Heavenly Father. Thanks be to God that he is faithful to his children, ready to comfort us in every type of trial and tribulation. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, Jesus said, and I will give you rest. Let's begin by singing the hymn, Be Still, My Soul. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of painful pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. For oh, now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know. His voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Be still, my soul, when dearest friends depart, and all is dark and in despair of tears. Then shall you better know his love, his heart who comes to soothe your sorrow and your fears. Be still, my soul, your sins us can repay. From his own fullness all he takes away. Be still, my soul, the hour is hasting on, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, 
sorrow forgot, love's purest joys restore. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, your children were clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness to your children and to all those who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Some readings from God's Word. Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written, Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead, they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth 
and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the hymn, also in the Lutheran service book, number 526. You are the way through, you alone can we the Father find. In you, Christ, has God revealed his heart and will and mind. You are the truth, your word alone, true wisdom can impart. You only can inform the mind and purify the heart. You are the life, the empty tomb proclaims your conquering heart. And those who put their trust in you, not death nor hell shall harm. You are the way, the truth, the life, grant us that way to know. That truth to keep, that life to win, whose joy is eternal flow. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, when we think about those whom we love but see no longer, we will meditate upon the Gospel according to St. John, where we are told, Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have learned to know me, you will know my Father also. People today are asking the same basic questions as did Jesus' contemporaries. Does our existence have meaning? Is God interested in each person, considering there are nearly 8 billion people on the earth today? Does human life end permanently in the grave? If there is more, how do I get to the good place? Questions like these tend to particularly assert themselves during a global crisis, such as the virus pandemic we face at the moment. In this gospel reading today, Thomas admits to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus' answer to Thomas and his answer to us is the same. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have learned to know me, you will know my Father also. These powerful words tell us that Jesus expects us to know him 
and to recognize that knowing him is the key to knowing the father of all things. The key to knowing the answers to the most important questions in life now and in eternity. It helps to know that Jesus is the way. Furthermore, Jesus shows us more than the existence of one straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. He shows us how to remain on that path because he himself is the way. He is the shepherd who leads us on that path. Our connection to him, like branches connected to a vine, is our guarantee that we will never that we will enter eternal life through him and never be snatched out of his hand. In our baptism, we are connected to Jesus. Part of the wonder of that sacrament is that scripture teaches that in baptism, we actually died and rose together with Christ. This is a connection, a way to Jesus, that physical death does not sever. Remember the good shepherd imagery we find in the Bible? Well, how do sheep find their way? They don't get out Google Maps or GPS navigation. No, they follow the way to which their shepherd leads them. The prophet Isaiah wrote, He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms he will carry them in his bosom. It helps to know that Jesus is the truth. The way Jesus puts it does not leave a lot of wiggle room for those who feel uncomfortable with exclusive truth claims. He plainly says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. St. Peter echoed this when he preached that there is salvation in no one else. But nowhere is there any other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. At the trial of Christ, Pontius Pilate sneered at the reality of truth, but that does not change what Jesus proclaimed to him that day. For this reason I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Into our world of uncertainty and fake news, God wants to inject the good news that we have the truth from him. That good news from God is that his crucified and risen son, our Savior Jesus Christ, has conquered sin and death by absorbing its impact and its consequences into himself when he allowed himself to be executed for the crimes of fallen humanity and all the sins of our loved ones. On the cross, the good shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. He was able to lay down his life and he was able to take it up again because he is the Son of God. And Christ's resurrection from the dead proves once and for all that all that he claimed to be is true. It helps to know that Jesus is the life. For what our Lord refers to in today's gospel when he describes himself as the life is more than mere biological life. What he means is that he is the source of spiritual and eternal life too. Life that endures beyond the numbered days of our life in this world. Praying to his heavenly father, recorded in John 17, Jesus acknowledged, this is everlasting life to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. The pain that we feel now of loss and sadness is real and runs deep. 
Jesus knows this, since he himself wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. However, in that same connection, Jesus, who proclaimed to his disciples that he is the way, the truth, and the life, said to Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, and to us, I am the resurrection and the life. Even when we mourn the departure of someone we love, even as we experience sorrow at knowing we can't physically be together with the person who is no longer with us, we can still rejoice in the reunion that will one day happen at the resurrection. We can rejoice about this because the life that Christ gives us transcends the life of our mortal body. When this mortal life ceases, the body of our departed loved one has been laid aside, perhaps by cremation or burial in some way. But as the one who trusted in Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, our loved ones have eternal life. They are still with Christ, our Good Shepherd, our Savior, and our God. He still embraces that one whom he has saved. He is still carrying them in his bosom. He is still tending to them and meeting all their needs. They are alive with him, for he is the God of the living, and they see him face to face. And remember that in a sense, we are still together with them, for we all share in the eternal life of Christ as we share in his mystical body, the church. This is why I love the expression from the Christmas bidding prayer that they rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light. That multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom, in this Lord Jesus, we forevermore are one. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal Comforter, give courage and faith to the bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those whom they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful shepherd, we give thanks for our loved ones who are no longer with us and for all the blessings you bestowed on them during this earthly life. You supported them through the valley of the shadow of death. Bring us also at last to our eternal home that we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to family and friends and all who mourn comfort in their grief 
and assure confidence of your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death, he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into your merciful and loving arms and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We sing to him, Behold a host arrayed in white in the Lutheran service book number 676. Behold a host arrayed in white, like thousand snow-clad mountains bright. With palms they stand, who is this band before the throne of these are the saints of glorious fame, who from the great affliction came, and in the blood of Jesus' blood are cleansed from guilt and shame. They now serve God both day and night. They sing their songs in endless light. Their anthems ring as they all sing with angels shining. Right. Despise and scorn they sojourn here, but now how glorious they appear. Those martyrs stand a priestly band. God's throne forever here. 